are some lies in our science books. Taught it for 15 years. Even though I'm not teaching it anymore, I still like to study. It's so many neat things to learn. And we're going to cover some of that tonight. Perception is being managed. We are being steered and guided by a hidden hand. The whole world has been duped by the media that is not real. <laughs> smart thinking, possible time traveler, smart thinking. That night, boom, contact memory. And then, do, Alex, if you don't agree, you'll be sent to a re-education camp. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I've lost my touch with the lady. Experts are suggesting that we're in a golden age of shape-shifting reptilian sightings. Now, why is that? I was, and still am, a huge conspiracy guy. I literally ran out of new tin hat topics to research. It was most definitely not capable of melting steel. Then I would be a crackpot if I thought that was that was the, the case. Thought that was that was the, the case. Welcome to the Hypothetical Institute, a podcast about conspiracies. My name is Luke. I'm Salty. I'm Cam. How are we, boys? Good. I'm Peachy Keen. It's been a long time between podcast drinks. It has been. Yep. Uh, we, we've been settling into lockdown 2.0. We're locked down again. How have you guys been finding it? Robbo, have you been resisting the urge to go out and spread your germs everywhere this time? Yeah. I mean, I didn't spread. I haven't spread any germs. I've been tested negative and I'm doing all the right things per the government rules. You're tested? Ages ago, like two or three weeks. And how was the test? Did you, how was getting the things stuffed up your nose? It's fine. The, the... People saying, like, oh, my God, it's awful, just puts people off getting it. Yeah. Like, it's it's, it's unpleasant. I'm not saying it's, like, a, a fun experience. But, I mean, do you, I guess, people out there that haven't been tested that in Melbourne, do you not want to go and, like, find out what it's like for yourself? Go into a, you know, a, a car park and see this kind of global dystopia that we're in for yourself? What else are you doing? You're just staying at home anyway. Mm. Yeah, and you get a mild bit of discomfort. Let's see you go see a supermarket car park for a bit of a change of scenery. High Point Bloody Car Park. Bunnings. You go see a Bunnings. Have you guys been tested? No. No. I've had no symptoms, but. Mm. And I haven't been out. <laughs> yeah, I've rarely, very rarely been out as well. In four months. <laughs> All right. So what are we talking about today? Uh, we're talking about two really exciting topics, two local topics Two Australian topics. One is the Robina FEMA camps, and the other is the Gosford hieroglyphs. Yeah, the Gossy glyphs. Mm. Robina FEMA, Gosford glyphs. Lots of alliteration on today's show. Yeah. Should we start with the Gosford glyphs? All right. What did you find out about these, Robo? Uh, that they're definitely fake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Gosford glyphs are... Um, Basically, these Egyptian hieroglyphs that were discovered, uh, I think, in the 50s. I think maybe even in the 70s. Yeah, I think it was yeah. the 70s. Yeah, and like peak Egyptian prankery times. Yeah, and like they look kind of Egyptian-y, but also kind of not really. <laughs> they look like what someone who thinks they're trying to draw an Egyptian hieroglyph would draw. Um, they were found in Kurungal National Park, which I think there are some um, indigenous and uh, sorry Aboriginal uh, cave art around there, rock art. And this is kind of um, I don't know someone's obviously added this in to try and create a little bit of mystery. Mm. So yeah, they uh, they've they've been a mystery for a while. People have been a mystery in the sense of people have been interested in them. Yeah, not a mystery in the sense of they're very obviously fake. Oh, I, I mean, I can tell you why they're fake, because I've already blown the lead, really. Yeah, you, you have <laughs> yeah, this topic's basically over now, right? Remember, remember when we said, let's uh, leave saying things are fake until the end, because everything is fake? Yeah, but, like, <laughs> I mean, why would we lie or, or, like, do a little teaser? Are they real? It's like that bloody cryptoid, cryptoid book that I read, and every every chapter ends in, but who knows? 
It's like, yeah, we don't know because it's a, just tell me that up front that it's fake. But we want we don't want people to just skip to halfway and listen to the FEMA bit. We want them to hang on and listen to all of the Gosford bit. Well, yeah, but they'll miss out the great um, YouTube comments that I've copied into this web document right. I'm reading from. Anyway, yeah, tell us why they're fake. I, I did think it was interesting looking at the people who say they're not fake. All of them are like, no, like the the Egyptian Egyptologist like academic community refuses to even look at these because it would like blow apart everything that they they say about <laughs> Egypt. And then you look at people who've debunked it, and they've just gone to all of these Egyptologists and said, "What do you reckon about these?" And they're all like, "I can tell you in one second just from looking at it, there's not real." <laughs> and also, a lot of them, or one of them that I said uh, I was reading said. We'd love it if it was real. If it was real, like that would be the most exciting thing for us. Yeah, because if you're not. in the if you're in the Egyptology business, yeah, like it's all been done basically. No new developments in that industry. Yeah, no. Oh, unless, that, found, di- unless we- that digs something up like extra exciting. Yeah, in but it's Egypt. always <laughs> yeah, it's always just going to be in Egypt. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm over here in Australia. Like, oh, I can't travel because of COVID. Got to be internal travel for so long. Making finding our own sites. Unless it's like, you know, classic rock stations. You know, when we were kids, it was like the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And now it's like the 80s, 90s. And now. And 2000s. Uh, and the Egyptologists are always just updating, like, the eras of Egypt they're allowed to look at. Yeah. So eventually they'll just be looking at, you know, they'll be watching The Mummy <laughs> with <laughs> Brendan Fraser. <laughs> um, one of the One of the arguments... Uh, pro these being real was um, Egyptologists and this was in a YouTube vid um, they can't actually read old Egyptian, they can only read from Middle Egyptian onwards very few people can actually read the old stuff so that's that's evidence that just because these people can't understand what it's saying right. doesn't mean it's fake Right, it could just be super old Yeah, they just, they just don't But didn't they also find that like it's it's a mixture of all different eras of hieroglyphs yep. as well like yeah it's like not, thousands of years of difference yeah if it was real you would expect it all to be from one dude who came from one specific time period who wrote it the way he wrote it it would be like finding a, a piece of paper that had written on it uh welcome fair traveler to the ye oldie shop lol <laughs> uh, i enjoyed that one one piece of evidence for them being real that i saw uh, also on youtube was uh, if these are modern day forgeries, they're up really high, so whoever did them would need a ladder. <laughs> and, like it's in a cave or, or it's hard to get to, so they would have to take a ladder there and you know, there, think about it. Yeah. So I guess this would have fired up all the people who were like super into, like, ah, see, pre. pre European settlers, well, you know, we were people were here before that. Well, yeah, so I started watching a video. It was part one of three, and each part was 40 minutes plus long. Right. And I quickly jettisoned that from my watching. (laughs) Um, But there was two – I think they were talking to two Egyptian guys who who believed in it. Um, Of course, they want to claim it. Yeah, and I was like, oh, these guys are just trying to claim it so they can, you know, say that they're, like, the best or something. (laughs) Yeah, I – there was one thing I really liked about the people who were claiming it was real. There was one little trick that one guy did where there's like one of the main proponents of it in Australia was this guy called like Ray Johnson, who I think was a self uh, trained Egyptologist. But that's also that Ray Johnson is also like the name of a really well known proper Egyptologist. <laughs> <laughs> but like, the, some of the people writing papers about the Gosford glyphs and them being real, they would, like, cite the, the the proper guy a couple of times on, like, little points about different, you know, just basic Egyptology stuff. Right. And then they'd, like, cite the cooked one, and they didn't really, like, say, oh, by the way, this is a different one to the other guy that I cited <laughs> before. So it looks like it's the proper one commenting on it. That's a bit sneaky. I found a doctor, um, a PhD, uh, Hans Dieter von Sneff. He was also commenting on YouTube. Sounds like it. I found him. Um, And he, his comment was, as stated by me in ancient Egyptians in Australia in 2013, uh, and he gives the ISBN number of his book, uh, the proto-Egyptian glyphs at Karaong, New South Wales, can be read 
However, the translation transliteration of these old glyphs is difficult. I congratulate the team for a professional job well done and note that the team used the same methodology as used by me in the above book. Thanking all of you, Dr. Hans Dieter von Senf. And there's one reply to that uh, that says, is your name a sneeze? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Which I I love with a meeting of minds. Um, I've tried to do a little bit of research about, um, and I found this guy quite late in the piece. I I don't know a lot about him. Uh, I don't think he's very legitimate, though. I don't know who published his book. Just the sneeze guy? Yeah, Hans Dieter von Senf. Um, Maybe I'll come back and and look at him later on. His book's in the National Library. I don't even think my book was in the National Library. Is is his last name Synth, as in Synthesizer? No, Synth. Sorry, S-E-N-F-F. Ah. Synth. I was going to say, if his last name was Synth, that's pretty cool. Hey, my book is in the National Library, so fucking flex on that. (laughs) Okay. So we need to remember that when we're trying to destroy every copy of your book, we've got to go and destroy the last one in the National Library at the end. Make sure you get the boxes of uh, <laughs> box, 60-odd boxes at my house. <laughs> Maybe. That'll make the job a lot easier, though, if we can knock out the majority of them by just burning down Robbo's house. <laughs> um, I've seen my sales figures, and, yeah, you probably would. <laughs> Don't burn down my house, though. No. And buy keg bottle can. Yeah, look, it's a little bit out of date now, three years after the fact, but um, the actual the actual structure and the factual information around drinking and enjoying beer is all true and all interesting. Hit are me up, getting, I'll, I'll send you a copy. Are you getting a um, an update? I haven't had one for a while. I think they've stopped. My last update uh, was just showed me all the books that bookstores sent back. Oh, no, I mean, like, are they letting you have, a like, a new edition? Don't think so. <laughs> Oh, I think it's, man. yeah, I don't know. The publishing industry is not doing so well. It's, it's, yeah, I don't know. If anyone's listening or wants to publish my second book, hit me up. <laughs> anyway. So, enough of that. What, what else did you find about the Gosford glyphs? Um, oh, one theory, uh, again, on YouTube was um, could the, so, so some of the symbols apparently were reversed, and someone's got a suggestion, uh, could some of the reverse symbols be because it's in the Southern Hemisphere? Just a thought. Yep, good thinking. It's, uh, hey, look, it's an interesting theory. I'll give it. I'll give it that. Um, and then there was a video debunking them, just saying. So basically, the debunking of them is they're, they're, they they just be washed away, like all the other um, anything else carved into rocks in that site and that kind of rock just washes away really quickly, mm. like after a couple of hundred years. Um, and that was the premise of this debunking vid. Uh, but someone's commented and said, can you read First Dynasty hieroglyphs? I thought not, wanker. Maybe try, <laughs> <laughs> maybe try educating yourself before making videos on a subject you know nothing about. So some, some pretty sick owns in the uh, world of the comments of these hieroglyphs. So they think that it might have been soldiers, right? Yeah. I think like- I read blokes who had like, served in Egypt. In the wars. Oh, this is the who it really was. Yeah. Yeah, it could be, because I think the, the story that is on them, or what's been translated, I think maybe this is just, they've just carved some random things on the, the rocks. Right. But the people who believe in it say that it tells a story of uh, these two brothers, perhaps royalty, uh, who were sailing from Egypt and they their ship got wrecked in Australia and then one of them died of a snake bite, right. and as you do. Uh, and then the other one has carved this eulogy for him, telling the story of his life on the wall. Right. Are you saying you wouldn't die from a snake bite, Cam? No, because I'd get you to suck it out of me. Mm, I wouldn't. Well, Especially in this bloody environment. Yeah. That's I can't fine. Social, socially distancing a snake bite out of you. But I couldn't find anyone who believed in it who could explain why a couple of Egyptian guys would get shipwrecked on the east coast of Australia, which seems like the opposite coast that they would it would make sense for them to get shipwrecked on if they were coming here at all. Mm. Like they've really come the long way around I think from it's Egypt. Super lost. Yeah. Oh, um, and one of the arguments against it was uh, 
apparently there's other other instances of Australian soldiers doing that that kind of thing as well around that part of the world. So I think just Australian soldiers went and went, oh, these are pretty cool yeah. things. We should we should get some of these going over. over they went here. to Egypt, thought it was sick, come back, and because they you know they they were old tough blokes, they probably liked hanging out in the bush, carrying ladders into parks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just go out, find some nice soft rock to carve some some of that cool shit they saw in Egypt up on there. I did see one description of the caves that said you could drive a car into them. Right. Right. So, so they've, they've gone down there in the ute, stood in the back of the ute. This is something that's kind of interesting, though, of like, because there's kind of a story around them and because they're fake, they, they were a tourist attraction in their own right. Mm. I'm just thinking there's a, there's a thing in the beer world at the moment with fake bottles from a certain brewery in, in Belgium, and now people are trying to find those bottles. Right. And I think it's that kind of same thing. Like, yeah, someone's made a forgery that's famous enough that everyone knows about it, then, of course, people are going to want to see it. And so then it becomes a, you know, in a hundred years' time, that's going to be a really interesting thing to go look at. Spill the tea on this, these fake bottles. What's going on? Oh, it's pretty deep into Lambic nerdery. I don't... I don't... All right, actually, no, I don't want to yeah. know, Nate, that you've said it's Lambic-related. <laughs> look, I, I know where the line is for, for interesting and boring, and, yeah, this crosses into it pretty quickly. <laughs> okay, okay, it's interesting... You think you know that lot. Uh, <laughs> do, do, do you have any more on the Gosford glyphs? No, not after that. It's no, like really. slam worthy of the YouTube comments of this topic. <laughs> All right. Shall we talk about the Rabina Fema camp? Yeah, Rabina yeah. Fema it up. Actually, I, I thought we could talk about all of the FEMA camps in Australia, although I think there's just the Rabina one as the main one. Right. I did... Um, discover some hot goss about a uh, gas chamber underneath a Woolworths oh, in Mull- right. Mullumbimby. So we'll talk we'll, about that one as well. We'll get to that. In Mullum- oh, geez, that's that's a rough area. There's a lot of conspiracies up there. Yeah, that's a controversial supermarket. Um, anyway, we'll get to that. Um, so I, I started looking at FEMA camps in Australia because I was noticing some of the conspiracy types that I was looking at like Thanos Panayades from the 99% group were talking about a, a FEMA camp in Broadmeadows. <clears throat> and uh, I think that they'd locked down. Broadmeadows was like a high COVID area at the time. And he traveled to it to check out this camp that, you know, I think they'd done like a Google map. Someone with this Google map screenshot of it was going around. It was the refugee Detention centre in Broadmeadows. Right. So an so we, actual camp. An actual camp. Mm. They're like, oh, it's a FEMA camp. You know, what's going on in there? Why won't they let us in? It's like, well... Why would they let you in? <laughs> anyway, because of that, people in the comments are like, yeah, there's FEMA camps all over Australia. Look at the Rabina FEMA camp. So, Rabina FEMA. What did you... I reckon I put this in the chat a month long, ago, by yeah. the way. You didn't invent this. How long should we... Um, <laughs> How long should we go into the Rabina FEMA chat before we reveal that that's fake as well? Oops. Oh, no. So what is the Rabina FEMA? Train yard. <laughs> it's, it's, it's where they park the trains next to the Rabina train station. And all these people are like, they've put the camp right next to the train station so that it's they can just put us on the trains and take us to Rabina which, you know, is already bad enough. And then, is that a good burn? Salty, does that make any sense as a Queensland burn? Oh, yeah. It's out, it's out there near, like, Ipswich and that. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I thought, oh, no, no. Is it? Rabina, it's, it's near, on the it's Gold Coast. Skill yeah. Stadium, apparently. Yeah. yeah, they'll take us to Rabina, which is bad enough, but then they're going to put us in the Rabina FEMA camp uh, behind all this barbed wire. Why would they have barbed wire around this area? that they don't want people to get into. It doesn't make any sense. And, yeah, it's just a big staging yard for trains. They take them there and clean them. So did you watch the, the main video um, of the two blokes? One of them's an MP or a, a former politician. Who was that? What? <laughs> did you guys not watch that one? I don't know if I saw that one. No. Oh, I, I went to write a name I'm like, nah, Camel. Camel would have saved that guy's name. Dr. Alexander Douglas, who's an MP, used to be an MP in the Queensland Parliament, I think he was a National Party member uh, in the Queensland Parliament. I think he ran as an independent, joined the United Party. Right. United Australia Party, was that? That's um, Palmer. Palmer, yeah, Clive yeah. Palmer. Um, so, yeah, him and this other this old guy um, takes him around the, the rail yards. It's just a video of this guy. His name's Raymond Perrin. 
uh, who's quite, I think, notoriously an end times kind of Bible Christian. Um, he's since passed away. Rest in peace, uh, old Ray. Yeah. Oh, did he get to at least see the end times in action? <laughs> Fortunately, he didn't. He he died, I think, a couple of years ago. Raymond Spearing, sorry. But they like, yeah, he's just going around. He's like, you know, there's, there's mesh here. And look at this room. And look at the, the barbed wire. And the cameras are facing out. Why would the cameras face out? Um, and But his argument is there's barbed wire and mesh to keep people inside. Yeah. Mm. But then he's like, and why would the cameras face out? I'm like, wouldn't they, by your argument, face in? And also, they never seem to understand that the mesh, having a mesh fence that you can just climb up is not like typically something you would have in a prison. No. Like, <laughs> no. But it is it's, a, it, it's a tight weave mesh, though. You couldn't get your fingers in there. No, but there was something about the way that it was, it was like on the outside, it was very, it would be impossible to climb up. But from the inside, it was something you could actually probably grab onto. Yeah, the inside, it had like the, the construction stuff was on the inside. Yeah. All right. So you could just climb out. One argument I said uh, was like, there's the barbed wires facing in. And I was like, what? Try climb over it then. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter which yeah. way it's facing. <laughs> what, what, how's that an argument? Barbed wire is, uh, you know, multi-directional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Barbed wire will cut you anywhere it's going. Southern hemisphere, northern hemisphere, it will cut you. <laughs> um, yeah, so so Raymond Spearing and, and Alexander Douglas took a bit of it. And this is kind of the most famous one. I think he's been the most prominent guy pushing it. This was back in 2011, I think. Um, and it hit the news again like a couple of months ago because apparently Triple M was talking about it. But then people, one person went out there, I think in 20, must have been 2016. Is this the guy that was in a Facebook argument about it? So he just went there? No, no. It was one guy that um, he went there and like, he's like, notice there's lots of security guards. And he's like, why would there be this, you know, even more security guards than when people's, people have been there in the past? And then he said... It was two weeks before the Commonwealth Games. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, your aunt's a dickhead. I, I did see one video of a guy that was in a Facebook argument about it. He didn't believe that they were real. But, like, to win the argument, he actually travelled there. Is that, and, the, the, is that the video I watched? Yeah, and then he, yeah. Spe- he speaks to, like, a security guard. He's like, oh, you'd know this area pretty well. And the guy's like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, he also the other guy's like, you're not filming me, are you? And he's like, oh, no, nah, uh, no, nah, I just couldn't even see you probably. Yeah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I enjoyed he's, that guy was like, they're saying they're going to drag us in there. And I, I'm thinking, God, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed watching that guy. Yeah, I, I went into that video thinking it was, uh, he was trying to expose that it was a FEMA camp. Sounded like he was going that way, didn't he? So for ages, I was just like, oh, fuck off. And he's like, see this razor wire? I'm like, mate, it's just a normal fence. Then then, then there is the razor wire. And I'm like, okay, there it is. And he goes, look in there. See the see the trains? Fucking, can you, can you see the trains in there? I'm like, just screaming at my TV. It's a fucking train yard. And then he's just like, it's just a train yard, eh? <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, oh, yeah, I'm on your side. <laughs> Good, good expose. <laughs> but I think I went into it with the wrong attitude. Since then, it's it's kind of been ticking along. As I said, it must have been on Triple M recently because I saw one comment saying, I'm here after listening to Triple M Nights. Uh, I tried to find what that discussion was. I couldn't find it. But right. um, I found someone on aussiejustice.wordpress.com. Yep. And they um, they couldn't upload a photo of themselves, they said, because they didn't want to use too many megabytes. Too many megabytes. I saw that yeah. as well. <laughs> but they had so many other photos of yeah. other stuff. <laughs> and it's a WordPress account. It was quite confusing. Mm. Anyway, um, they just had some standard photos, also clearly showing that it's a rail yard. And But they said um, it was built near a creek. And they pointed out that um, some of the execution camps in Poland during World War II also located near rivers. Right. It's like, have you have you seen Rabina from above? It's all creeks and canals. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Even more to the argument. Perfect Lucky. spot for it. Also, have there has there ever been anywhere in the world a secret prison camp or concentration camp that they built next to a busy sports stadium? <laughs> That's the other yeah. thing. Like, a sports stadium is also probably pretty well designed to keep a lot of people in yeah. quite easily. 
but no, the rail yard with no infrastructure. Yep. That's where we're going to do it. It's probably all underground, mate. Uh, like the Mullumbimby gas chambers. Yeah, speaking of underground things, what's going on in Mullumbimby? Because I, I imagine they weren't happy about that supermarket in the first place, right? No, many protests. Just let me point this out about Rabina, and we were talking about that bloke who has ties to Clive Palmer's political mm. party. Two Palmer golf courses in Rabina. There you go. Maybe he bankrolled the whole bloody thing. Before we talked about... Um, did you remember... Remember him talking about potatoes? Did you guys ever hear that audio? Of, of I'm not sure. There was no. a press conference, and there was one in Queensland where he talked for maybe one minute about potatoes. Right. A good, like, potatoes. You can mash them. You can roast them. You can fry them. <laughs> you started listing all the things you could do with potatoes. Um, and on the audio, you can hear all the journalists like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, just a couple of uh, other YouTube comments. Uh, someone says, because uh, one of the arguments was that uh, Ray Spearing was making psychic predictions. Um, and someone's pointed out these are not psychic predictions. They're Bible prophecies. This is all Bible. This is all biblical. If you do not take the mark, you are considered a troublemaker and will be beheaded. Right. Which is interesting because why would they build a prison camp if they're just going to behead us? Yeah. Uh, someone else is talking about fully fledged Satanists, Satanists in government making laws that act against its citizens. Um, you think the, if you think the government is transparent in telling us everything, you're a fool. Hmm, that's probably a reasonable take. <laughs> um, someone else said their uncle. This is a really curious one, and, and it's probably pretty awful what happened. But my uncle came to the Gold Coast on holidays from New Zealand. He had a collapse at the spit, then went to Griffith Uni Hospital. He was not assessed as a priority and seemed in good condition. Two hours later, when the doctors got to him, he was apparently critical while showing little outward signs. Fifteen minutes later, he died on the table. I thought it might be crazy, but maybe there is a black market for body parts, and he was put down, basically. Then I remembered this video, Robina Fema Camp video. There was a chance he was taken. He was working seven days a week at one point. There you go. So they knew his organs were good. Yeah, I don't know. What's the reason for that, do you think? The seven mm. days a week part? Yeah, I don't know if there's a lot of reason going on there. <laughs> it's a bloody roller coaster, I tell you that much. Um, yeah, the comments on this, and someone else commented that um, apparently Pinterest is the superior place to find um, and share vital pieces of information about this. I'm so, not sure that's true. <laughs> I, did see, I did see stuff on Pinterest. Yeah, there was. I, I remember seeing a lot of Pinterest links. Uh, yeah, so the gas chamber under Mullumbimby, uh, this is all in caps, this comment. There's a gas chamber underneath Woolworths and Mullumbimby. You can see it for yourself if you look down the gutter drain. I know <laughs> several workers from different compartments who were not allowed to communicate with other compartments, pipes, wires, walls, etc., built by separate groups. Yeah, that's, that's how construction works. Yeah. <laughs> Now it makes more sense why they spent billions overriding the court decision not to allow the multi-trillion dollar company into little little old Mullum Woolworths. Don't shop there. I'm not sure they spent billions on getting a supermarket in Mullum Mimby. No, there was certainly a, a campaign against the supermarket by the residents of the area, um, which is kind of par for the course in that part of the world. Uh, which is cool. I'm into that. They, they want to keep local shopping and not big companies. Yeah. They um, are, they're but, a bit grumpy about lots of things in Mullum. Yeah, there's a lot of 5G protests around there, aren't there? Yeah. Um, one lady was unhappy, though. She took a, re- a reusable container and to get chicken necks for her dog and they wouldn't let her fill it up. Uh, which, you know, let her use the container. I think that's okay. Yeah. It's a big issue these days. Wastage. But trying to, the problem with all the controversy around the supermarket and this lady in her bloody container is the gas chamber stories get buried. Right. I couldn't mm. find any good stories about the gas chamber. Typical. This is how they do it. I'm sometimes in that part of the world um, for beer stuff, so next time I am. Go find the storm drain and look down it. Yeah. yeah. I'll I mean, make sure to. Try and send us a picture of it and it'll take 10 minutes because you're on the 3G network. Because yeah. they haven't allowed 5G. If you've got enough megabytes. I'll, I'll get the megabytes. I'll store some up. <laughs> uh, did you come up with anything more about the Rabina Fema? 
Nah, not really. Well, should we do should we do some news in this episode? Yeah, Just... I guess so. I just want to say one thing. It's kind of frustrating seeing all these people talk about FEMA camps locking us up when, like, there's huge problems with incarceration of Indigenous and refugee communities. And, like, they don't give a shit about that at all. No. Nice. Like, it's, yeah. it's actually happening. Uh, and it's just no real interest in it from these cooked units. Mm. But be worried about actual the fictional locking up of normal people that's never going to happen. Yeah. Be worried about an imaginary. It's something we invented. Worry about that. Uh, all right. Our, fir- our, our first bit of news, uh, and this, I think, ticks a number of boxes. What's that... Um. What's the show where he makes them sit down? <laughs> it's fucking vague, Cam. <laughs> no, yeah. I know. Um, Chris, the, the To Catch a Predator. Yeah, To Catch a Predator. Right. This, oh, yeah. <laughs> this, uh, this tricks a few boxes. I don't know if we've, ever, you know, have we like, even talked about it on the podcast. We, we, we've all been sucked down To Catch a Predator holes before. But which I mean, like, we've all been sucked down holes of watching To Catch a Predator I just, <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> I just want to mention my first thought was the show that he makes them sit down was Millionaire Hot Seat starring <laughs> Eddie McGuire. <laughs> They're like, hang on, it wouldn't be that. <laughs> so um, the head of the Mutual UFO Network, which is like a uh, – it's MUFON. It's one of the uh, oldest UFO research organisations. Right. Uh, the head of it got catch a predator. He was uh, on the internet talking to a 13-year-old. And had some ideas about that, and uh, it wasn't a thirteen-year-old at all. It was Chris Hansen? Yeah, it was. I think it might have been the police, but uh, uh. it's a big scandal within the UFO research community, right? Although it remains to be seen. So there's been a lot of you know QAnon crossover with that those people lately. But are they going to turn on one of their own? Is the question. Mm. I haven't seen much about that so far, but. Mm, we shall see. Uh, the next topic here is uh, Beyonce is Anne Marie Lestrassi. Yeah, this is a this one's been bouncing around for a couple of years now. Some guy who's running for Congress recently tweeted it. Yes. He tweeted a massive thread about it, and I can't. T- that guy is serious, right? Yeah. Because I saw uh, Tim Heidecker has like a video call-in show now, and they had him on as a guest. And in the description, they said, oh, you know, this guy running for Congress breaks character. But I think they were, just, they were just taking the mickey. Yeah. But I was like, why are you calling Tim Heidecker's show? I don't know if you have any media advisors. I feel like Tim Heidecker could, could get a little prank going quite easily with this, these kind of people, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so the conspiracy is that Beyonce is actually an Italian pop star. <laughs> yeah. Um, I haven't looked, I've been looking into it ages ago. Uh, and look, I'm going to, I'm going to say evidence is flimsy. You heard it here first. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, but there's, there might be a full show in it one day. I don't know. It's it's in there. It's happening. One uh, well, day. They need to put some more info together, I think. Mm. Uh, Wayfair was a big one. Yeah, can you give us the summary of that? Because even Pete Evans got in on that one, which I guess isn't saying much these days. But Yeah, so there's this company called Wayfair. They're a furniture company. They had a bunch of – you could go on their website and type in a bunch of different uh, names and bring up these really expensive filing cabinets and, like, little cupboard things – and people were like, you know, all of the, and they were really, yeah, they were quite expensive. And people were like, all of these names are like the names of missing children. <laughs> and I thought at first when I saw it, that the idea was that they were sell- selling the children. Like you put in an order for a cabinet and they'd send you a child. Right. But then what they were actually proposing was that you put in an order for a cabinet and they would send you the cabinet with the child inside it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why don't we just take the cabinet out of the equation entirely? Also, how do, tra- how do you transport the child inside the cabinet? Oh, how would you do it normally? Yeah, I don't know. On a Us. yeah, in a car. Like you, you're a cabinet making company that's also child trafficking. You don't like, oh, how are we going to send this child? You look around, did you factor with all these cabinets? And you're like, oh, I don't know, <laughs> a bus, I guess. <laughs> like, of course you'd do it in there. 
I, I, if I was a cabinet company slash child trafficking company, I would separate those divisions. Now, I know we're trying to break down silos, but I would still want there to be some silos between my legitimate cabinet business and my illegitimate child trafficking business. Does that yeah, make no, sense? That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I know that that's sort of counter to, you know, good business practice of, of us all being on the same page, but. You can't have the the cabinet people knowing him too much about what's going on on the other side. The thing was, like, they were quite expensive for cabinets, but they were fairly cheap for children, I think. Right. What if you set up a warehouse that was for the children, sent all your seconds, factory seconds from your normal warehouse over to there, the people from the factory only have to think they're sending seconds to the seconds warehouse, but they're actually going to be used to transport the kids. I think I'd be a little bit annoyed if I ordered a child in a cabinet and I got, like, you know, a cabinet with a dodgy hinge or something because it was from the seconds warehouse. Yeah, you'd want a quality cabinet. Yeah, I suppose. For that but, um, money. The thing was, apparently, the, the cabinets, firstly, you know, they were just names. You know, it wasn't like they had the full names of missing children. They They just had, like, lady names. Right. Just like IKEA or like shoe companies call things names. Yeah, yeah. like this, this is the Cheryl, or this is the right. Beatrice. Uh, but the other thing was that apparently what the the all of the, the reason the cabinets were so expensive is because they were like industrial cabinets. Like they they weren't just normal ones that you'd have in your house. They were ones for like proper warehouses with heavy things, right? And lots of it. So it sort of made sense. And they're like, oh, yeah, we probably should have put that on the page. It was funny, though, after that was debunked, they never, none of them ever really moved on from it. But then I saw them coming out with other things. There was, like, a a bulk, uh, like, just one of these companies that sells stuff in bulk. And they were looking at some of the, the prices of, like, frozen fish. And they're like, well, that's so expensive for frozen fish. They're doing it here as well. <laughs> Uh, the the company was called like the Intergalactic Smuggling Company or something. It was like a it was a riff on Star Wars, and uh, they're like they've even got smuggling in the name of the company. They're not trying to hide it. But the the actual price of the fish was like slightly pricey. I, I think it was like maybe a higher quality of fish, so it was probably normally priced for getting like two hundred pounds of frozen fish. <laughs> um. I uh, read a, a book recently all about the, the fishing industries and all the slave labour that happens on there, um, on fishing boats and merchant boats. So I feel like, again, these conspiracy theorists need to probably look at what's actually happening <laughs> um, and how people are being trafficked rather than looking at weird pricing on online cabinets. <laughs> yeah, there was something else I saw this week was... Cause I'm, so I'm in a lot of QAnon groups on Facebook now and heaps of them were talking about like there's there's like an international day of you know uh, awareness for child trafficking coming up hmm. because child trafficking does happen. Uh, it doesn't happen, you know, in the basement of pizza restaurants. No. <laughs> but uh, th- they, they were all getting on this bandwagon and the people who run these groups that are the legitimate groups that are trying to, combat this stuff, they seem like they're sort of st- not sure how to handle this r- extra interest in the topic because they do want to do something about it, but all of these QAnon people are just massively distracting from what the real problems are. Mm. But, yeah, I, I looked at one guy that runs a group, and he does seem a little bit cooked, but he is also like an ex- Police guy who was, you know, got frustrated with, you know, his the inability of the of law enforcement to deal with some of these issues. So I think maybe there's a bit of extrajudicial stuff going on. Yeah. But he seemed to be trying to walk the tightrope of like not pissing off people that like crazy people that he might be able to bring on board. Hmm. Which I wasn't sure if that was quite the right way to go. But yeah. I have seen a few of those people saying this is really frustrating <laughs> that people are paying attention, but it's because they're insane. Um, Pete Evans, as I said, posted a meme about this one as well. Just, I feel like that needs to be repeated. How cooked Pete Evans is. <laughs> yeah, he's he just went. He's gone fully for it since the last time we spoke about him. Like, there's n- no mask anymore. 
literally. Uh, yeah. Let's see what else happened. Uh, QAnon has, is getting booted off Twitter. This this happened just the other day. Uh, Twitter have said that they're not going to... I don't know if they're necessarily going to boot all anyone talking about QAnon off the service, but I think it was probably in relation to people like Chrissy Teigen who are being, you know, targeted by QAnon. And she said she was going to quit Twitter unless they did something about it. And then a few days later, <laughs> they've said, we're going to kick people off who are posting about QAnon if they're involved in targeted harassment. Mm. And also, I think if uh, they are, like, maintaining multiple accounts and sort of getting around bans and that sort of thing. Um, they're all going to parlour, right? Well, some of them have said, let's go to parlour. Some of them have said, let's just talk in code on Twitter. I think the problem with both of those things is that if you're talking in code on Twitter, it's sort of difficult to get everyone on board with the same code. You've also got the issue of if you're trying to get new people in, if you're talking in code, it makes it even more inaccessible. Mm. And that's also the problem with Parler. Uh, everyone on Parler is already cooked. It's not like Twitter where it's a lot of cooked people and a lot of normal people. Like everyone on Parler is already starting from a position of being cooked. <laughs> so you're not really going to be winning too many converts over, especially if anyone who's on Parler who's not going to be into QAnon is not going to be into QAnon because they're like, no, obviously it's not, Q's not a real thing. Q is, you know, a Freemason conspiracy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's and then at least infighting, and as has happened with all these um, cooked right breakaway networks, it just falls apart. Yeah. And then I, I guess there's also the just normal right-wing reactionary dickheads on parlor, but you know, whatever. Who cares if they get pilled? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, saw, I did see uh, Melbourne has been popping up in Q conspiracies a little bit. I don't know if this has been appearing in any actual Q drops, mm-hmm. but uh, I did see there's a there was a guy who was a decoder, and he was talking about uh, Melbourne because the with the when they shut down the towers here in Melbourne for they did a hard sh- lockdown on uh, some of the public housing towers here mm. for our American listeners. Uh, they locked down the towers and the people started saying, oh, it's because they're clearing out the tunnels underneath Melbourne of the little <laughs> kitties. And th- I saw that expanded in one of these Decode Guys videos. They were talking about uh, under the Dandenongs, which is some mountains near Melbourne, uh, the deep underground military bases or dumbs were being cleared out. I just thought it was really funny that someone told them to call them dumbs. <laughs> and they like just went with it, so they're always talking about all these dumbs. You know, there's a lot of dumbs in Melbourne. It's like oh, I think you've been taken for a ride. I just saw a Q tweet. Do you want me to read it to you? Yeah, yeah. Live Q stuff. Q has been in direct contact with me to inform me that the Queen of England is a necrophiliac, and that my dump truck ass drives him wild. Okay. There you go. It's hot off the press. And was that um, tweeted by <laughs> at Saltmarsh? Hey? Was that tweeted by you? No. So thanks for saying that I've got a dump truck ass that drives <laughs> men wild. But yeah. So I, I, did I put that Alex Jones here? I put update. Yeah. Well. So Alex Jones says he's never been against Q. Yeah. So I, know I haven't really watched much Alex Jones. I just had a quick look before. Um, I haven't watched much recently. But yeah, he's, he's always flip flop on Q. For a while there, he was all in. Then he was all out saying it was all made up. And he got slammed uh, by Q. Q had a go. Yeah, yeah. And now he's saying he knows who originally started Q and uh, it's a military insider. And now they, you know, they were doing it to help Donald Trump and to get secret information out. Um, but now now it's not and they've lost control. And his line for a while has been, it's, it's going to be used to set someone up. So, like, um, I posted a video ages ago on uh, Twitter about him saying you're going to, be called to a basement somewhere and then suddenly a bomb's going to blow up and then you're, you know, what a weird scenario of Jonesy. Um, but yeah, so Jonesy's still talking about it. He's just all over the shop with it. He's inconsistent. He is famously inconsistent. 
Uh, you've also also noted he has uh, new lawyers in his Sandy Hook case. What happened to the old lawyers? I think he got rid of them. Um, so I, you know, that's sort of where that case is at. So still more to come on that one. Yeah. Well, he just keeps losing like pre-trial motions. Yeah. And having to like turn over more and more documents. I don't really see how he could ever win that case. though. Like, no. <laughs> just because there's like hours and hours of video footage of him doing what he says he didn't do. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. It has been a little while since uh, we've recorded anything. Gislaine Maxwell was arrested. <laughs> yeah. Also, oh, yeah. Um, I learned I, the only reason I put on there, because I, I didn't put any sort of mainstream news in there. I tried not to. But um, Gillane Maxwell is uh, as how it's being pronounced uh, by everyone on TV. All right, fine. Without the S. So I just thought I'd, I'd get that in there. Gillane. Um, Gillane Maxwell. Mm, um, let's just stick with Gislaine. Gislaine. Mm. All right. So uh, Maxie's been arrested. Uh, hopefully we can get to the bottom of what she was doing at that In-N-Out Burger. Yeah. <laughs> and what's the deal with that movie poster? We'll never know. I did see uh, there was a little bit of Jacob Wall news a couple of days ago where there was a story in the Daily Mail which is, is that the Daily Mail are the ones that uh, busted open the story about the movie poster and everything, right? I think so, yeah. Because that, that was a weird tabloid fight that happened over that, where it was like the New York Post or something published the dodgy planted story, and then the Daily Mail swooped in. And I don't know. It's weird, because they don't often do a lot of journalism there. <laughs> it's often just ripping off other people's things. Yeah. I think they may have been ripping off some 4chan investigation. Because I know, I, I remember when I was looking into it, uh, and I, f- I found like the metadata on the photo and that led to the to a lawyer. And then when I looked it up, I was like, "Oh, 4chan found this hours ago." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think that uh, the Daily Mail might have just been ripping off 4chan there. But that was a case where, yeah, the planted story was in another publication. The Daily Mail exposed it. In this case. The Daily Mail has reported that Jake Wall and that other guy, is it Jake Berkman, his uh, offsider, that these two right-wing grifters who are always having press conferences to reveal, you know, Joe Biden was into BDSM and, you know, I had a BDSM affair with him or whatever. <laughs> uh, they, they'll get these random people who often recant either before or after the revelation. <laughs> Uh, they had been hired by Ghislaine Maxwell to smear some of the victims was the story. Right. And they'd been paid like $20,000 to do this. But it seems that the story was actually planted by Jacob Wall. There's like no evidence that Ghislaine actually did that. And it seems most likely that Jacob Wall has put out a story that he had been hired to smear a victim of Epstein uh, for whatever reason, just because he likes to see his name in the paper, maybe. Mm. Or maybe it, like, you could say, you know, you might be, like, a dodgy person, but doesn't mean you can't hire me. You know, I'll work with the dodgy people. But, yeah, it was a weird one. All very confusing. Anyway, Ghislaine yes. Maxwell is, is how we're saying it. We do have a bit of Pete Evans news here. Here, Dale Bredesen, Bredesen on his podcast, Doctor Dale. Yes. What's so Doctor Dale's story? He has got like this. Um, it's called the Bredesen Protocol, where it's all about curing Alzheimer's through diet, uh, and also giving this guy a lot of money and signing up to add-ons and subscriptions, right. but mostly diet. Right. Good eye. Um he is an actual doctor, and I, I, he has somewhat credibility, but uh, he's also, I think, pretty cooked. You know, you can you can be a doctor and also really cooked as well. The, you can pass some exams even if you're cooked. Um, but yeah, that's that's not as cooked as what Pete Evans has been doing lately. But you know, it's just another addition to the whole thing. And the last thing you've got here is that the Chinese embassy in Houston was closed. There's, so there has been a spy scandal. Hmm. Uh, soon after the announcement, staff were seeing burning paper on the roof. Yeah. And when the fire brigade showed up, they're like, nah, there wasn't a fire. Yeah. Now, there's actually video footage of them burning stuff on the roof. 
Uh, yeah, which I thought was great. Yeah. I have seen people saying, like, this is what they do at embassies, you know, when they're about to pull out because there's going to be a civil war. Right. And it's like, mm, no, nah, th- firstly, they're allowed to burn documents, <laughs> yeah. especially if, they've, if they want to avoid, you know, getting caught with spy stuff. Just run it through a shredder. No, nah, burn it. Burn it quickly. Cross cut shredder. Cross I cut. Just, yeah, get, a, get one of those four-way shredders and then, you know, chuck it in some water. Make paper mache. Wouldn't it be better to make paper mache than to add to the air pollution of Chicago or Houston or wherever it is? Yeah. Houston. Yeah, I guess so. I guess, you know, you're not thinking. You need to do a lot quickly. They probably have multiple. They're probably shredding documents. Like, all the shredders are being used. What do we do? Burn it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Keeping you awake there, Cam. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, that's the news. I, I, I did try and avoid a lot of the, you know, Trump stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was the other thing with Ghislaine. Someone asked Trump about Ghislaine. He wished her well. <laughs> He's like, I, w- I wish her all the best. <laughs> Which is also funny, like, because that same press conference, people were saying, you know, he does something really presidential because he said to wear masks. You know, he read off a script. And then people were like, yeah, he, like, the bar is so low that he he only praised one sex trafficker, which is <laughs> a good, you know, that's a, oh, wow, he's really, really changed. And I had, they just sort of seemed to be ignoring, in the Q world, they just sort of seemed to be ignoring it. Yeah. Uh, I would have thought it was big news, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. Not logical, the old Q world. Anyway, Robbo, if people want to find us, where can they do that? Uh, hypothepod on Twitter, hypotheticalinstitute.com. Yep. Is that? Do we have that? Yep. Um, I don't know why you always ask me. I can never remember. Hypothepod.com, cookedunits.com if you want to grab some merch. Excellent. Plenty of places. And, Robert, where can they find you if you can remember that? Uh, at Isle of a Time and Isle of a Time.com everywhere. Salty? Uh, you can get me at Salt Marsh on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Andrew Solmash Illustration on Facebook, Tohido on Patreon, and uh, I've been streaming a lot on Twitch, doing some artwork. Um, so twitch.tv slash the salt. And you can get me at Sexenheimer on Twitter. I've been posting a lot of uh, conspiracy videos lately. Sorry to the Hypothepod Twitter account. And my radio show, 3cr.org.au slash yeah, nah, pass around. We've actually just done an interview about QAnon. So you can have a listen to that. Excellent. Good stuff. When's that one airing? Tomorrow? No, it just aired to the, uh, on Thursday. Oh. So it's, oh, it's Thursday, isn't it? Yeah. It's all available. It's available as a podcast afterwards. So. Excellent. I'll check that one out. Cool. All right, folks. Thanks, C- everyone. Catch you later. Thanks, we'll, everyone. We'll, we'll be back a bit more regularly. Yeah. And um, just let's say thanks to all our Patreons as well, because they're not getting a show this week. Yeah, especially our Tammy. Cook th- Tammy, our Cook33 sponsor. Thanks, Tammy. We'll have some more content for you guys soon. Yep. Bye. 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 Don't worry about a thing. Except if all our world leaders are alien reptilians. I said don't worry about a thing. Except maybe the fluoride in our water supply contains mind-altering drugs. About a thing Except whether or not Port Arthur was a false flag operation In which to disarm Australia I said don't worry About a thing I accept You can definitely hear John Lennon say I buried Paul at the end of Strawberry Fields forever Don't worry About a thing Except not only did Bush do 9-11, but he also keeps the planes out in Area 51, which, let's not forget where all the aliens are. Don't worry about a thing, except Donald Trump is clearly a woman and you're just blind if you can't see the one you